love, you know, November. I love all of it, but I really love November where you kind of get to know a team and, uh, you know, they're both going to be home a lot in the early goings. And, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. Looking forward to hearing from the head coach here in a little bit. We've not talked to him in several months. So good to be here uh, from Fred Hoiberg. But, obviously, football front and center after what was just an unbelievably sad finish for Nebraska. The Huskers played so well in so many areas of the game. Defensively, I don't know what else you could ask out of that group. They don't give up a first down in the second half. Nebraska has the lead. You try to punt the ball to the right side of the field. The ball goes to the left. Nobody's over there. Reed takes it to the house for a touchdown to tie it, and then Sparty wins it in overtime. I, I was, quite honestly, Jessica, I was at a loss for words at the end of that game because I felt – for most of that second half, the Nebraska was going to win that football game. Yeah, I mean, they just, the defense just absolutely dominated, especially in that second half. I mean, the run in overtime uh, from Kenneth Walker was his longest play of the entire day. It was, like, I think, 11 yards, right? And you're talking about a guy that came in leading the nation and rushing 8.6 yards a carry, nearly nine yards a carry, and what the Huskers did to him and that Michigan State rushing attack. I mean, they were averaging over 260 yards a game, hold them to 71 yards. So, I mean, just unbelievable, you know, the way that they shut down that Michigan State rushing attack, and, and they've got nothing going. So even, you know, I went down to the sideline by the end because, uh, you know, working on a feature on Luke Reimer, so I'd gone up into the stands to uh, get some video of his brother, and, when I got down on the sideline and Jeremiah was there, he's like, even if we go to overtime, Michigan State can't score. We're, we're fine. And so, you know, again, you just, the way that the defense was performing, Michigan State could absolutely do nothing. So, yeah, you, you just, I felt like, oh, this is in the bag. There's no way Michigan State is getting on the board again. And, and that, in, in, if the punt had been shanked out of bounds, I think Nebraska wins because yeah. I don't think, you're right, I, think, I don't think they could have driven down even from 40 or 50 yards out to tie the game. I think the defense was playing that well, but it is what it is. And, you know, I, I after the game, I, I thought I thought the head coach did a pretty good job. I mean, you, you don't want to throw players under the bus, but my gosh, if you're there to punt, punt. And if you're told to punt to right, punt it to the right. Yeah, and it, I mean, at some point, I mean, they're so close. And I think, obviously, you can see improvements and you can see that this is a good football team. It is a good football team. And you're talking about, you know, a couple things here or there. I mean, you look at last week, we were disappointed in the kicking game, right? right. What the kicker did, but the punter, the punting was, was solid last week. And then you, you flip it this week, and, and Connor Culp did a great job. I mean, he, he, he you know, both chances he got, he knocked them through, and, you know, the punting. And so it's, you know, again, you're talking about one or two little things here or there that's keeping this team um, from winning games. And again, you know, I talked to, uh, two of the captains, Cam Taylor Britt and Austin Allen, after the game, and you know, again, they they know it's on. They gotta they gotta change the tide. They've got to change the script, and you know, they're so close to doing that. And I feel like once it does, look out because I, I you know, again, we've said it all along. Winning changes so many things, but you just figure out how to win one of these, and then you know how, and then you know, you you never know what dominoes can fall. I'm nervous about that. I, last week I was really confident coming out of the Oklahoma game that this team was able to, was going to be able to put it back together and go play well. And they, I think they did, other than a play or two here in special teams. This one concerns me. My, what's kind of saving me in this is this week's games at home. And we haven't played many home games. So right. I think they're going to get energized when they get to the field Saturday night from the crowd. But you can only take so many punches to the gut before you really kind of drop to your knees and and I'm more I am I am nervous about that because man that was there were some sad looks in that locker room on the plane when we came back that 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 one really hurt oh yeah I mean it, it was absolutely devastating and you know but I do think as far as this defense goes I don't really I think as long as they keep playing the way they're playing you know, again, they're going to continue. Nebraska's going to continue to be in every single game they play in. I mean, and I don't think this defense has any, you know, any inclination. They're not letting. They're not letting down. I mean, I think they're taking a lot of pride in the way they're dominating football games, even though the scoreboard's not turning out the way that they hope for it too. And it's a team game, but I think they are. I think they're really, really confident. And I don't think their confidence is shook at all. And you know, there's a lot of guys on on the defense that are trying to play on Sundays, and you want to you know, continue to put that film out there, but also just the, the pride when they step out on the field of playing black shirt defense. And I don't, 
I don't expect any kind of letdown from, from that Nebraska defense. And so as long as they continue to, to show up and play like they have, you're going to continue to be in those games. I think so. And I do think that they will continue to slug away. Northwestern's not, by any stretch of the imagination, an offensive juggernaut. So I think the ability is there for the defense Saturday to shut down another team in the Cats who are coming in here. They did play better this past week. They, they beat up on Ohio. They looked probably the best that they have looked in the first month, and the head coach of Nebraska, Scott Frost, said that today that they've gotten better as the weeks have gone on. But this is still not a great offensive team that Nebraska will face um, in the game at Memorial Stadium on Saturday night. Doug in Norfolk on our text line said the offense had a shot at closing the game out with maybe two or three first downs at the end of the game. Then they wouldn't have had to punt. That, that's a good point. That, that's fair. Um, Nebraska got it back with about five and a half minutes or so to go in the game, and you felt like get a couple of first downs here and then really shorten the game. Nebraska went three and out and had to punt it. And, yes, they were conservative. But, Jessica, when your defense is playing as well as Nebraska's was, why would you take very many risks? Because you feel like our defense has them. They've got them stopped. Why? I, there was no reason to open up the playbook when they got the ball back there. Yeah, I mean, and again, that's what I was saying. You just fully, even at the end when you're going into overtime, you're thinking there's no way Michigan State is scoring. I, I didn't. You know, Jeremiah said that. I fully believed it. Even if you're looking at both, you know, teams getting a possession, you don't. I fully didn't think that Michigan State would be able to score a touchdown. I thought they'd have to kick a field goal. I mean, they ended up having to do that. But I just, I fully believed that if Nebraska scored a touchdown, there would be, they would still win that game in, in overtime. So I just, yeah, again, I think, Again, what Scott was saying, why he gave, you know, puts the black shirts out on the field first, just the utmost trust and confidence in what that defense can do. And so, yeah, I mean, I think you think their Michigan State can absolutely cannot get anything going. They What was the total yardage? It was like five yards or something? I think they had 14 in the second half. It, is that, that's counting overtime, though, right? No, I think they went up a little okay. bit after that. But it was like 14 yards of offense and a half, no first downs. Yeah, no first downs. So they just were having all kinds of troubles. So, yeah, I mean, Absolutely, you have all the confidence in the world in your defense. But but Doug is right, and and that was what my mindset was too. I'm thinking get one, two first downs. They only had two timeouts left because they used one earlier in the half, a defensive timeout because Nebraska had them on their heels, and Nebraska had that defense for Michigan State worn out. Yes, so yep. they used one earlier in the half to sl slow things down. Nebraska ended up scoring the touchdown in that play, but it all flipped on a punt, and you hate to single out one player but but neither Daniel or Will were very good punting the ball the other night Dan Will had the seven yard punt he had a shank and then Daniel kicks it to the wrong side of the field I mean it's just you, you just your mind's blown you're like I, I did not see that happening at all well and again it's just such a huge momentum swing even though Michigan State the offense the offense could not get anything going it's still it's just a huge momentum boost for an entire team that right. once you see that happen then you then you start to believe believe that hey we can get things done but yeah you saw that that Michigan State defense boy they were gassed they had their hands on their hips they were leaning down they were tired so I mean yeah it's just um again there are there's plays here or there and that's you know again what the team will continue to say they're not gonna single anybody out or point any fingers but there's you know plays here or there that that completely change this game but there's no doubt about it that a huge special teams play completely changed the tide of a game you were down there on the field it was so quiet the fourth quarter because nebraska had taken them out yeah. and then the punt return happened and all the energy oh, was back in the stadium it was so loud down there after that it was so loud going into overtime yeah i mean that crowd got back in it i mean it just it completely just changes things when when you make a big special teams play like that Matt and Raymond on our text line said we need to learn how to stop snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. I, I agree. That's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, Nebraska's got a couple of these games, and then all of a sudden it, it flips. That's the million-dollar thing, Matt, is how, do you, how does Nebraska flip the script on uh, those games? All right, 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program tonight. Let's head to the phone. Let's go to West Point and Pete. Good evening, Pete. Welcome to the program. How are you doing today? Oh, been better, honestly. <laughs> well, I guess my take on it, uh, the special teams is just, I'm sorry, we got to have a special teams coach. I don't think we have any coach that really knows how to teach a punter how to punt or a field goal kicker. I think they just know how to put people out there and kind of organize it a little bit. But 
I guess what kind of disappoints me, and it doesn't get brought up much, but the truth of the matter is we had receivers, tight ends especially, that weren't even covered after five, six yards. You have to hit those guys as a quarterback. And and five to six times the tight ends I seen was wide open. And on that interception in overtime, we had a guy, Manning, that was almost wide open that could have went in for a touchdown. So those missed opportunities can't be lost either because when you miss those opportunities, instead of being a seven-point game to go into overtime, it should have been a hit by 14. Fair point. Yeah, the, the lead should have been much bigger than it was. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate the phone call. And, and, yeah, I think we'll hear this a lot tonight, Jessica, that maybe a special teams coach needs to be hired, and that's something that I think probably gets addressed here in the coming months. Yeah, I mean, again, when you're talking about, we heard Joel Klatt talk about it after the Oklahoma game. You know, your, your special teams away, you have to be good in all three phases. It takes all three phases to win to win games like that one, to win games like the Oklahoma game, that where it's so tight like that, you've, you've got, it's all three phases that, that win those games. But I did want to, you know, talk about the Adrian point. There were times, yes, there were receivers open, but there were Michigan State defensive linemen all coming at him in a hurry. I mean, Adrian was rushed all night long, yep. and he was pressured all night long. And, you know, yes, I think he will be the first to say, yes, I missed plays here, I missed a throw here, but also... He he did not have a lot of time to throw, and he got sacked seven times, and also got out of a lot of those. It could have been a lot more had you not had a guy that can move his feet. You know, Jeremiah and I were talking about that. Like, you know, he gets them out of a lot of things too because of the way his athleticism, the way he can use his feet. So, you know, yes, there were some throws that I, I guarantee you, Adrian would like to have back. But there's also he didn't have a lot of time sometimes to make those throws either. Levi Falk was open on the first play of overtime down the field near the goal line. But again, to your point, Adrian's having to run and move his feet all the time because the pressure was immediately in his face. It, it goes hand in hand. Pete, appreciate the call. Let's go to Rockport and Jerry. Good evening, Jerry. Welcome to Sports Nightly. Greg, how are you and Jessica today? Good. Thank you. Well, by golly, I tell you, I was... I was heartbroken there listening to the game. I didn't I, first game I haven't been to in person. We traveled to Illinois and, and Oklahoma, but I had a question or a comment on the punting, and I don't remember which coordinator we had, special teams coordinator, but it was on, I believe it was even on your your show a few years ago. But they there was a there was a comment they made about trying to not directionally uh, punt. You know, in other words, when you when you try to, you know, guide it one way or the other, that's when you lead to the shanks and and the poor punting. And and I wonder if there isn't something to that because we went down there. You know, uh, William down there at uh, Oklahoma seemingly just booted it away, and he had a good average. And that guy from Michigan State, look what he did. He just bombed away. He didn't try to directionally punt that. And so I I'm wondering if there isn't something to that about trying to be so precise. And so just getting the leg into it and let her fly. I mean, you know, uh, what do you think about that? No, that's a fair point. Jerry, appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Yeah, and I do. I can't remember which coach made that comment that sometimes when you try to do something one way, it isn't going to work out for you. But I know that's also something they practice. They practice a right side of the field kick, a left side of the field kick, uh, trying to cough and corner a kick. Go ahead and kick it straight down the field. They do all those different scenarios, Jessica, in practice, and that's what it's for, is for when you're called upon to do right, left, middle, whatever, then you're supposed to be able to execute that. Absolutely. I mean, it's not like they haven't been practicing that. To me, it's it's between the ears a little bit, you know? I and agree. I mean, yeah. for a lot of it. So, you know, you, you've got to get it done on Saturdays, and that's the thing, and you can do it all day long, right, and practice, but it's got to translate to Saturdays. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Let's go from Jerry to Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. You're up next on Sports Island. Good evening. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, I was wondering on the special teams coordinator front, The um, I know we're already at our maximum for coaches, so would we have to get rid of a coach? Would we have to uh, change a coach around? Or do you think it's possible to have uh, Lubick be the offensive coordinator and have Scott Frost take over the special team coordinator job? 
I'm going to hang up and listen on the radio. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. Yeah, that's always an option. You can have your head coach take over the special teams. That's pretty rare, particularly with as involved as Scott is with the offense to do that. Um, th- this came up two years ago when Nebraska made a couple of changes along their coaching staff. You had a couple of coaches that left. Javon DeWitt left for North Carolina. And Scott talked to a couple of special teams coaches, and he opted to bring Mike Dawson back, who had joined the Giants staff in the NFL, and the Giants staff got let go, and so Mike Dawson was out there. Scott had had Mike on his initial staff here in Lincoln and brought him back to be the outside linebackers coach at that point in time. But, yeah, that's an option if you wanted to do that. But you're also right, too. Nebraska's at their maximum number. So if they make a change in the offseason, they're going to have to make a change with one of their uh, their assistant coaches. Let's head back to the phone. Let's go to Minnesota. And, Tim, good evening, Tim. Welcome to Sports Nightly. Thank you. Um, now, this point uh, it hasn't been brought up. I hope it uh, – I want to do it now. Uh, one thing – it, I, I was thinking of when Adrian got knocked out of the game temporarily. Um, and, you know, that's the last thing, obviously, we wanted to have happen. But I would say that turned out for the future to be extremely valuable because I thought Logan Smothers acquitted himself extremely well um, the short time that he was there. And, you know, and also that was obviously a crucial game experience. Um, there's two other things, but I want to save those for Thursday night. I, I, I'm thinking of the uh, an offensive guy in there on on the Thursday night show. Yeah, it's going to so be gonna it's going to be Ryan Hill about. Thursday night, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and so, but yeah, um, I, and I'm with these guys. It was extremely painful. I'm concerned about the. I'm not so much about the. Well, just about the psyche. Yeah, so far, it sounds. I'm cautiously optimistic about that, but. Definitely concerning, just like you said, how many more punches can even the strongest of teams take? Um, so that's obviously a concern. But you know, my main thing is, I, I, in the back of my mind, I've been kind of concerned about, um, you know, years after Adrian's done. Uh, and so it was really good to see um, Logan Smothers. And then, you know, on top of that, I, you know, the cake, we get Adrian back. So it, it was just, that has to be huge for Logan's confidence. So I guess that's it for now. Very good. Tim, thanks. What did you think of Logan when he got out there the other night? I thought he looked great, and he, he looked ready for the moment, as we heard Coach uh, Frost say. But when he came out there, I didn't think he looked jittery at all. I thought he looked ready and confident. And, you know, as we heard, he you know went down the field and a couple penalties that halted the drive. But he did what he needed to do and looked ready and confident and didn't look nervous at all to me. They sure did. Got it to the 40 of Michigan State. Back-to-back fall starts. Put a shit back to the 50 and end of the drive. The fall starts have to stop. They just have to stop. We had it in Oklahoma. All right, that's the first time you played in front of a big crowd in a couple of years. But they did it again the other night. That's just that's just got to stop. And again, it's a mental thing, you know, and you just, you've got to fix that. And and it's not anything, it's, it's something that you personally, you know, it's not something that you can be, I mean, I guess you can't be coached out of it, but the player has to make that decision to, to stop that. You know, it's it's just, again, one of those mental things. That I think once you work through it, then you can move through it, but they just have not worked through it yet. Exactly. Dale and Hastings on our text line. Defense playing at a high level. Shutting down the running game was cool. Offense is beginning to turn the corner. Wish we would have hired a special teams coach back in February. That's Dale in Hastings. Valentino's Pizza Poster and Pepsi, it's back. Get two jumbo one-topping pizzas for $17.99 each and a free Husker schedule poster. Add a two-liter bottle of Pepsi for only $1.99. Valentino's, it's the official pizza of the Huskers, the way pizza should be. Need to take a break? 402-413-2400. More of your calls, more of your texts, more of the show coming up next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. 
everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds, one in 292 million. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance. More than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit to Toast Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or to ToastSubaru.com. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed helping you and your cattle. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic you always dreamed of owning your own farm now you're living your dream and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together massey ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do making them easier to operate more comfortable to drive more versatile than ever massey ferguson gives nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field Osceola Implement in Osceola, Nebraska, your locally owned Massey Ferguson dealer. Proud supporters of the Huskers and Nebraska farmers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Tailgating pros agree that Lucille's famous fried chicken and more at Sap Brothers scores big with Husker fans. Be the MVP of your tailgate party this year and let Lucille's do the cooking. Stop by Sap Brothers Travel Center or visit www.sapbros.net to find out how you can elevate your tailgate party with Lucille's famous fried chicken. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official sponsor of Husker Athletics. Great job, everyone. Printers, great coverage. Phones, quick pickups. Firewall, tough defense. And network, way to carry the whole team. Ever since Marco started calling our technology plays, we work smarter and our whole game is more streamlined. Marco's all-star services and support give us the winning edge. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us, Sid. 
Ed Dillon. Chevy, find new roads. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Sports highly after a, a gut-wrenching loss for the Big Red on Saturday night to Michigan State. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. On our text line, Jessica Stephen Bellevue, every game, winner, whether we win or lose, it's offensive line, special teams, defense is awesome. Martinez can't do it all by himself. I hope people don't lose it in the shuffle how well the black shirts played Saturday night. That They were amazing out there Saturday night. I mean, it really is. And, you know, again, kind of what I was saying earlier, anytime you got a defense that can just absolutely shut teams down like they did, I mean, they shut down Oklahoma after that first series for a long part of that game, for a large part of that game. And you're talking about entire halves that they're just denying any – offensive production from opposing offenses so you know I, I the and I don't think that's going anywhere because of the leaders on the black shirts I you know I talked to Cam Taylor Britt post game we've seen and heard from Jojo Doman I mean the Damian Daniels I mean the, you're talking about you know leaders that are not going to allow for the defense to take any step down and in fact I think they're kind of the confidence is continuing to grow from that defense yes they're disappointed that the team can't get the outcome that they want but as far as what the black shirts are doing week in and week out I think they're continuing to get confidence and I said it last week they were disappointed with how they played at Oklahoma as well as they played because they felt like they left a lot out there I still don't think they're as good as they could be I agree and that's kind of what's scary and so I think they're they're shooting for that two of the touchdowns a flea flicker trick play punt return yeah and then the rest for field goals I mean Ugh. No doubt about it that this this is one of the best defenses in in the country and and you know the offense and and this is another thing that I'll say as far as you know because I've been asked about you know is the locker room going to divide are they going to get frustrated with the offense but I don't think so because I think of how much those guys on the defense love Adrian Martinez it's not like you know there's not another leader on the other side of the ball that you know I, I said it all along you can tell that this team really wants to play for Adrian Martinez and. How many times has JoJo Doman, has Cam Taylor Britt, has, you know, Damian Daniels been silly? Talked about how much they love Adrian Martinez. So they're going to keep playing hard for him. Nebraska 811 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. Let's head back to the phones. Let's stay in Lincoln, chat with John next. Good evening, John. Hi. I've been going to football games for 74 years, and I had to sit back in part of the 40s, all the 50s and part of the 60s until Tippy Dye Jr. brought Bob Vanny in here. And I guess my opinion is right now is just what you said. We're almost there, and I am tired of hearing people, you know, I've heard people say, well, we should limit his salary or do this or do that. We need to give the coach five years. We need to support. And if you don't like it, go watch midget football or something. But what I'm concerned about is – how are we going to keep our streak going? I know when I was a kid, I paid a quarter to sit in the north end zone in the knot hole section. Are the fans, I mean, these fans I hear complaining, they've been a fan 25 or 30 years. Well, try 74 years. Uh, I'm, I'm wanting to know if the little fan like myself could go in and buy an extra ticket or something, you know, show the support. If we show support, and are there and fill that stadium, that's going to make the biggest difference with the team. That's, that's where I'm coming from. Very good. John, thank you. The, the sellout continues this week, right? I mean, uh, they did. there was a few extra tickets left to purchase that the red carpet experience is also going to get to do again. That's been a great 
just a great, um, great deal there that giving kids an opportunity. We've seen such great stories coming out of that, giving these these kids some opportunities to, you know, experience their first Husker, Husker game. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's maybe some of the other games down the road are, are getting close, that, but... Yeah, and, and the first night game, I know that it's going to be awesome. There's a lot of great things planned as far as the production from Husker Vision and, and whatnot, and a lot of these teams are bringing their recruits in. So I really do think Saturday will be a great atmosphere, and I agree, though, you know, that, that fan support is huge, and it's why, you know, teams plan their recruiting weekends around football home games, and, you know, the, that's a lot of reasons why I've, I've interviewed a lot of players and a lot of them talk about why they came here was because of the fan support. So that is absolutely critical that you stay behind this team because that's what keeps the next generation of Huskers wanting to come here and play here. Got another night game against Michigan. Yes, now, that'll today, be fun. 630 for the Wolverines in, in a week. Rusty in Albuquerque on our text line. When will our return specialists learn to field kicks instead of letting the ball hit the ground and give up? Valuable, valuable field position. That that's a good point. I mean, the other night we had the Michigan State punter launched one. I mean, it was a 73-yard oh, yeah. punt, and Samore was like, usually you stand about 40, 45 yards away. He boomed it over his head. So then the next time, Samore backed up, yep. and then he hit kind of a low driver that just kept fumbling its way through. You know, it sounds easy, Rusty, but we've also seen earlier in the season, if you remember, Cam Tater Britt was trying to come up and grab some of those that were rolling on the ground and take a funny hop, and then you lose the ball. I mean, it really is. It's a tough, tough job, and I think people just assume, oh, just put a wide receiver back there that can catch it, but you have to make a decision. You have to read it in the air, plus all these dudes are running at you 100 miles an hour and you don't know which way those things are going to take a hop here or there and we heard Scott Frost talking about it today that Samori wasn't training to be a punt returner it was Oliver Martin and it was Cam Taylor Britt well Oliver Martin has gone down so now Samori has you know gone back to that and while yes he can you know catch it but you just it, there it goes into you have to train and learn how to make those decisions it's not just hey catch the ball when it comes to you you have to know what to do in those certain situations and so yeah i think that's again continues to be a work in progress as well our sports highly hotline brought to you by the woodhouse auto family shop woodhouse first 18 brands 16 convenient locations simplified car buying to save you time shop finance and buy online at woodhouse Dot com. Phone line still open for you, 402-413-2400. Call or text. Back with more Sports Highly next. Experience the highest levels of luxury at Woodhouse Lincoln, the Metro's exclusive Lincoln dealer. Our dedicated sales team is ready to guide you to your perfect vehicle. With a lineup of unique crossovers and SUVs, Lincoln offers insightful technologies, connectivity, and interior amenities, while you experience the highest sales satisfaction among all luxury brands. Visit Woodhouse Lincoln at 144th and Giles Road or online at woodhouselincoln.com. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Don't let the cold winter worry you. As Nebraska's leading supplier of propane, you can count on Sap Brothers to keep your family warm this winter. You're like family, and your safety is the number one priority of Sap Brothers. When it comes to your propane needs, Sap Brothers has you covered. Visit www.sapbros.net slash petroleum to find your local Sap Brothers propane expert. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. 
That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in. Get out and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple-stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list, call JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elk. Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. We are back in our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night, 402-413-2400. The number to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. We're also up on our YouTube stream. And there is a chat room in there if you want to get in there and converse with some other Husker fans. Somebody in there wanted to know if I could punt. The answer is no. <laughs> Neither can I either. And on our text line, somebody <laughs> wanted to know if Adrian could punt. Probably, yes. Probably. I bet he could punt. He probably could. Also on our chat room, is there a senior on the offensive line? If not, who needs to step up and be the leader that shames the underclassmen into performing between the years? There is, there is a senior, quasi-senior, and... 
Matt Sichterman, but he's inexperienced. I think it's got to be Cam Jurgens. He's got to be the guy to kind of grab that group by the whole, and I think he tries. Yeah, I think he does. I, I think he absolutely is, and he's the vocal guy. You know, again, when I was down there for Oklahoma watching that, he is the one that's trying to be in their ear. I will say this, Austin Allen, um, post game, I asked him about, you know, just the offensive line and, and – can they get to where they need to be? And he says, you know, absolutely, I believe that they can. And he said that he saw last week, especially kind of, which didn't necessarily show up on maybe against Michigan State, but that they've kind of been holding, holding themselves to a different standard. They've been kind of um, getting after each other a little bit. That You know, they watch the film and they're disgusted with what they see and some of the things that they've done. And, and you know, so I think... I think they know that they have to be better. And, and again, we heard Coach talk about it. I'm sure we'll get to it in a little bit about there could be some shakeup. And a lot of times that is what a guy needs. You know, you go over there, you get your spot taken, you know, you get, you come back, you play better for it, you learn a lot from it. So, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully they'll figure it out. But there are still a lot of young guys that have not played in a lot of these situations. And, you know, guys at Turner that was hurt all throughout fall, you know, maybe right. set him back. You got some other guys that have, you know, been shifted around, but yeah, I mean, I think it's Cam. I think he's trying, but I, I think a lot of it too is you got a young, got some young guys on there that just have not been in those battles and those trenches very, very much. On the flip side of this whole thing, and we talked about it in the last segment, is just how well the defense played. Damian Daniels is making plays week in and week out. Matt Allen, the center for Michigan State, is considered a second, third round pick. Damian Daniels whipped him most of the night. Yeah, and I mean, he's looked good against Oklahoma, too. I mean, looked really good. I, I know there was a lot of people raving about what Damian Daniels did to the Oklahoma uh, offense as well. And then, yeah, he he's on a different level. And I, I think if he continues to play well, this is one of those guys when I said this earlier about there are players that are playing for the black shirts that have dreams and very well could go on and play on Sundays. And what this, what film you put out there week in and week out is so critical to that. And so you're talking about a guy like Damian Daniels, who very well could be playing at the next level and could be a high draft pick. You know, maybe if he continues on the path that he's going on, he wants to continue to put that film out there and you got to do it against, you know, some of the best teams. So that's why I don't think there's going to be a letdown either. I mean, yes, it's about the team and they, they want to win for Nebraska. But I also think a lot of these guys are thinking about setting themselves up for the future as well. Art in Los Angeles on our text line. Why did the Huskers elect to stop trying in the last minute of the game? And I'm pulling up my play by play sheet. The Huskers got the ball back with 47 seconds left at uh, their own 20 yard line. They threw a pass to, I believe it was Austin Allen, for 18 yards, and then Adrian got sacked on second down. So I think they were trying. Then the sack happened, and I think they thought, this is good overtime. Let's start fresh from there. If yeah. the sack doesn't happen, I think they would have kept trying to go. Yeah, I, and again, I just, I, yeah, I, I, um, I know with the way that that off offensive line was playing, and, and someone said in here in the chat as well, that it doesn't look like they have much confidence. Probably didn't want to, you know, put that out, you know, risk that as well. If they're not play going out there with confidence, you don't want to risk making a bad negative play right. and setting yourself up for an even worse position. Turn the ball over yeah. and get a chance to win it with a field goal at the end of regulation. Visit a participating ag code eater between now and November 12th and enter for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Nebraska-Iowa game November 26th in Lincoln. We'll throw in some pregame tailgate passes in there as well. See participating at locations across Nebraska, and you could win this season. 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program with a call or a text. Back with our final segment of Hour 1 next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset, day by day. Donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. 
Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location. Or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. Now it's time to see what's on tap. Presented by Bud Light. Husker Volleyball back in action Friday night at the Devaney Center. The Michigan Wolverines are in town for a 6 o'clock start. 5.30 for pregame coverage here on the network. And Friday night at PBA will be the basketball teams, the men and the women, being introduced to the crowd. They're both going to scrimmage a little bit. And then G. Herbo is going to entertain the crowd late into the night. I'm sure you and Andrew are going to be uh, well after midnight, hanging out at PBA. I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, Andrew has been, since the announcement came down, has been a giddy kid. It's his favorite artist. So, you know, but again, it shows, I think this is going to be huge for recruiting. Andrew's yep. about that, you know, type of demographic of these recruits that they're going for, and that's kind of what they were looking for. And I think it's going to be a huge recruiting weekend for a lot of teams, not just men's yes. basketball and not just football. Andrew is a young pup, isn't he? He's very young. Very, very young. <laughs> also, Husker football back in action Saturday night, Northwestern, 6.30, 2.30 for pregame coverage here on the network. It's time now. Uh, this is again our What's on Tap brought to you by Bud Light. 402-413-2400, Husker Volleyball off to a 2-0 and start. Got the sweep over Iowa on Saturday. Lindsey Crosby named the uh, Big Ten Player of the Week. I think there's some signs of some development with those two matches last week. Uh, absolutely, and I, you know, I think... They, there's just a shuffling of the lineup, and you know, and Coach we Cook has said that. We yeah, we, we thought we thought Lexi Sun would be in the starting lineup, but she wasn't. But he stuck to his word about he keeping, did. you know, the same lineup and letting them kind of work some things out. And I, do you think he knows what he's doing? <laughs> uh, I, I think he More does. Than you and I. Come yeah, on I now. think I, I think know. he does. But the those freshmen, it's just different, you know, and and. As good as they are and as much as they've played high-level volleyball, it is just a different feel, and there's different expectations, and I think they're still working that out. But I think you're starting to see them settle in and really get some confidence and look out. Jessica, Ohio State, I think, was ranked third last week. They went to Purdue Friday, Penn State Sunday. They're 0-2. And they're not a bad team. Those are two really good teams, Penn State and Wasn't Purdue. that JB's, like, 
Dark Horse, a player, a uh, team to watch to win. Yes. Yeah. This league so. is not easy. Now, Nebraska got a couple of light ones to start. This week will be more tougher. Both Michigan, Michigan State aren't bad, so they'll have to ratchet it and up. And Nebraska is going to get everybody's best every single time no, they're on the floor. No question. Buckle up. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. One hour in the books. We didn't get some Scott Frost clips in. We'll do that hour, too. And we'll talk to the head basketball coach, Fred Hoiberg, on the other side. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Shop with confidence at Woodhouse Ford. Take advantage of our current offers and vast inventory selection with features you want at a smart price. Schedule a test drive today or shop online with our streamlined sales process. We make it easy to shop, finance, and purchase in person or online at WoodhouseFord.com. Choose your experience and find your next vehicle at Woodhouse Ford in Blair, Omaha, or Plattsmouth. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and a new flagship capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
And welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is your sports nightly ticker. Scott Frost met with the media for his Monday press conference this morning following Saturday night's tough overtime loss to Michigan. Frost spoke on how he and his staff work with the Huskers to tackle their most pressing issues. You know what's unique is it seems like every week a new problem arrives. You, you fix one and work on one and spend a lot of time on one and something you haven't even anticipated comes up. Uh, week one we didn't field punts very well on punt return and um, then go down to Oklahoma and and miss kicks and then uh, work a bunch on that and then don't punt it well the next week and um, you know sometimes you, you can anticipate sometimes you have to react and um, we'll do our best to anticipate but if there's problems that come up we're gonna, we're gonna give them a lot of attention for her pivotal part in helping the Huskers to have a an undefeated week of volleyball outside hitter Lindsey Krause was named Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Over two games, Krause averaged 3.86 kills, one dig, and 0.43 blocks per set. In Wednesday's match against Northwestern, she recorded 15 kills and two blocks to go along with a 500 hitting percentage. On Saturday against Iowa, she duplicated her 500 hitting percentage and added 12 more kills. The Huskers are also hard at work abroad today in the 2021 Asia Cup, which is underway in Amman, Jordan. Jazz Shelley, a sophomore guard for Huskers women's basketball, helped the Australian national team win their opening contest against Chinese Taipei. Shelley recorded six points with a pair of three-pointers and added one assist, one block, and one steal. She led all Australian players with a point differential of plus 14 while on the floor. In pro sports, as October baseball inches ever closer, the MLB playoff picture is coming into sharper focus. In Seattle tonight, the A's battle the Mariners as both teams are within three games of the final wild card spot in the American League. First pitch is set for 9 p.m. Central. Monday Night Football also promises a divisional class as the Eagles are in Dallas to take on the Cowboys kickoff just under 10 minutes away. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Live inside Memorial Stadium, this is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as Demorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Cornhuskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Blackshirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wideouts left, Lever to the near side. In motion is two Ray, snap back, turn. Run the option of the near side. Adrian pitches it back to Samori to the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back with hour number two of Sports Nightly on a Monday after what I know was a very disappointing Saturday night for all of us. The Huskers... Had a win right there on the road against a ranked team. Would have been their first road win over a ranked team in 10 years, and it got snatched away from the Big Red. Uh, but now back-to-back -back home games, back-to-back -back night home games. The Michigan game will be at 6.30, ABC prime time. How about that? That will be exciting. Um, a huge opportunity, and Michigan, they got Wisconsin this week, so we'll see what they do coming in. But... Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun matchup. You get to see khaki pants come into Memorial Stadium. Oh, yeah. Stadium. Are you excited about that? Absolutely, yeah. We're going to hear from the head coach, Scott Frost, later in the hour. What do you think of him today? I thought he was great. I thought the way he, you know, answered questions. And it wasn't a lot of coach speak. Like, he actually talked about some of the things that are going on about, you know, the offensive line issues and that, you know, there's going to be some people that could lose their jobs if, you know, things aren't fixed, the punting and – you know, I, I like the appreciated the honesty and um, it seems like also, though, too, and he talked about, you know, getting involved with the special teams meetings and it was hard, but he also still seems upbeat and he still really likes this team, which I think is so important to remember that he really does like this team and believes in this team. And so as much as maybe people question him calling people out, which I don't think he's by any means gone too far, but um, I think he still loves this team and believes that this team can win a lot of football games on the stretch. I'm glad you referenced that because I have seen that, that people feel like he's throwing players under the bus by making comments like, we brought guys here to do certain things. We expect them to do that. That's, an, that's alluding to the punters and the kickers. You're brought here, some cases on scholarship, to kick, do it. And you're a major college athlete. You ought to be able to do that skill fairly well. Yeah, I, I just... I don't necessarily have a problem with it because 
Look, he he may be trying a different approach too because he was he didn't say anything negative about anybody for a long time. But look, it's time now. You got to start doing your job because it's you know you're talking about the difference between winning and losing football games, and that that's an that's an issue. Right. And that being said, though, I think he's also very quickly to um, turn around and you know, say how much he believes in the guy. Like, look what he said about Connor Culp when everybody was done with Connor Culp. And then he says, I have the utmost faith in, in Connor. But, yeah, he's got to get some things worked out. What did Connor do? He went in and hit two big field goals last week. So I think there's a, a balance between, yes, you, you have your guys back, but you also hold them to a standard and expect them to do the job, like you said, that he brought them in to do. Anybody who's played athletics knows that at, sometimes a coach is going to kick in the tail. Oh, they yeah. They kind of need to. At some time. And I think that that's kind of the point he's at with some of these guys. It's like, I'm, I'm not going to coddle you anymore. I'm going to call you out if you're not getting it done and a basic skill of punting the ball where we tell you to punt it to. Yeah, and then... I'm okay with that. I, absolutely, I am too. I think he was... I think, But I thought he was really great today in the press conference and answering some of the questions because, again, it is <laughs> it's the, probably the last thing anybody wants to do. It's, yep. it's, uh, the players, I was so impressed with how they handled it afterwards too. You know, talking with me, talking with the media, you know, they answered the questions and... Um, but it cannot be. That's the last thing you want to do after you lose a game like that. But I think the way that they've stood up and faced the, and answered the questions that have been asked their way, I thought they all, all of them, starting with Scott Frost on down, have handled it very, very well. Particularly when you're in shock, and that yeah. team was in shock Saturday night. They couldn't, they couldn't wrap their minds. I couldn't wrap my minds around what just happened in the last ten minutes of that game. You felt like this could be a win. We're gonna, we're gonna be getting on the bus back to the plane, eating our ice cream, having fun. And yeah. Gone. I mean, like they they absolutely, especially in the second half, dominated that football game. They were the better team. And while the offense didn't necessarily put up a bunch of points, but Michigan State was doing nothing. nothing. They were going nowhere. And so then for that to all of a sudden just not – it's just how did that happen? I think right. everybody's like, wait, what? Like, so – you know, the way that you dominate, have complete control of that game, and then just in an instant, it's gone. Yeah, it's, it's shocking, and it's hard. It's a really tough pill to swallow, and they were devastated. They were absolutely devastated. I said it on the air. I did not really know what to say at the end of the broadcast. It was that kind of a night. All right, I know you want to hear some basketball. Let's talk some basketball. Yes. Head coach Fred Hoiberg was, had a press conference earlier today. I was able to catch up with him a little bit after that. Let's listen in on my conversation with Fred Hoiberg. Welcome back. We're here on Sports Island. Delighted to be joined by the head basketball coach of the Cornhuskers, Fred Hoiberg. And it's got to feel good to kind of get back to some normalcy. I know we're still carrying masks around. we got plexiglass all over the place. But to get back kind of in a normal routine has to feel good for you and your program. Yeah, it, it has been. It's been a very beneficial offseason for us to this point. Uh, you know, you're right about still having the masks and understanding that we still are in the middle of a pandemic. And, you know, I have, uh, you know, continue to talk to our staff about wearing masks in practice. Uh, we want to take the cautious approach right now. Uh, very proud of everybody in our program for uh, being fully vaccinated. Uh, it's a big part of it. But, you know, as we've seen around the country, uh, you can still get this virus even if you're fully vaccinated. You know, even doing little things, if our guys come in with the sniffles or if they have a, a, a headache, uh, we make sure we keep them away from the group and, and go get tested. Uh, it's just unfortunately, you know, the era that we're living in right now uh, is, you know, with, with everything going on, you have to be cautious with this thing. And, you know, again, I'm proud of our guys. They, they all bought into going out and getting the vaccine, and hopefully that will benefit us moving forward. You have a core group back that you haven't had since you've been head coach here, but you've mixed in a bunch of new faces. How has the bonding with that group gone? Yeah, that, that's so important, Greg, when you put a group – together like we have because we do have a core group that had some success at the end of last season especially with the adversity that they faced over the course of the season uh, you know to take basically 21 days where they couldn't even be in the gym have f uh, five short practices and then play 14 games in 29 days that was very difficult on everybody but our guys continue to improve and grow uh, throughout that adversity so you know you've got a good core group of those guys back which is important uh, they can help the new guys along. And we're not basically starting from scratch like we were in year one and year two. Uh, plus, we had an off season this year where last year we didn't. It was basically individual workouts. It was guys uh, basically working out with their roommates. Uh, we were not crossing over, uh, and those were the guidelines that, that we had in place, and I think most of the Big Ten did as well. So, you know, you've got a returning group. You've got a really talented new uh, group of players uh, so I'm excited about it, Greg. We've, we've put in a lot of work to this point, 
uh, going all the way back in the summer where we had uh, four hours on the floor, uh, fall workouts, you know, the four hours, we've really been able to work on the fundamentals and the basics, uh, you know, hopefully understanding, getting our guys to understand the little things that it takes. We were in so many close games last year that we just did not finish off. Uh, we're going to be in a lot of close ones this year, and we have to be better in that area. And to me, it's all about the little things and the basics. Again, visiting with Fred Hoiberg here on Sports Nightly. Practice begins tomorrow for the Big Red. What kind of shape is the team coming in as you change strength coaches in the offseason? Where, where is everybody as you get ready to launch this? Yeah, I, I feel good about where we are. We, we had a very strict plan in place, uh, really led by our sports scientist, Chris Bach, and our strength coach, Kurt Joseph. Those guys uh, put a plan together as far as having really heavy weeks and then having weeks where you know, we, we unloaded them and uh, get them ready to, to go heavy again. So uh, we've got a, another plan in place for the next 42 days. We get 30 practices uh, in, in those 42 days, 42 days before our first contest, and just really want to get everybody playing at their optimum level on opening night uh, when we play against Western Illinois. We get two exhibition games in that stretch, Peru State uh, and Colorado. So to play in front of the fans, uh, you know, get a true feel uh, for what PBA is is going to be important for our players. But, you know, I feel really good about our, our uh, uh, athletic training uh, program, sports performance program with what we've added uh, with our nutritionist, with a full-time nutritionist that does a really good job getting our guys to understand the right things to put in their bodies. Uh, and now it's about getting in the best shape possible for when we open up in November. You mentioned Colorado. That's going to be one of those charity games. You play it, it doesn't count, but it goes to a good cause, right? Yeah, I, I, really smart thing and a great thing the NCAA put in place uh, several years ago was the ability to play uh, a, a charity game, uh, exhibition game for charity and against a great, great opponent and being able to play against Colorado. T Tad Boyle is a guy I've, I've really admired, done a great job. Uh, at his alma mater. Uh, he's a guy that I uh, coached against in the Big 12, had some good battles before Colorado left to go to the Pac-12. So, yeah, it should be a good game and a great experience for our players. This is we, a big week. You start, obviously, practice tomorrow, and then Friday night you have the big event at PBA, and I think we'll have a great crowd out there to see your team a little bit and get entertained by G. Herbo, who you mentioned earlier today is one of your favorites. But you also have some... Some recruits on campus, too, so I'm sure this is a huge week for you. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's it's going to be a great weekend for everybody involved in our program, and we do. We have some high-level kids that are coming on campus, and we're going to be able to show them, uh, you know, what their Nebraska experience would be all about, you know, with the two things that I feel are our are, are biggest selling points. One are the facilities, not only to see Pinnacle Bank Arena you know, hopefully full, uh, on Friday night or opening night, but also to experience the Hendricks Training Complex, the performance lab that we had, which I talked about earlier with Chris Bach uh, running the show over there and how we can really put their bodies in shape, um, you know, as far as taking any imbalances out based on the programs, individual programs that they're given. Uh, and then the support of the fans, uh, not only on Friday night, but they'll see 90,000 uh, in, uh, in Memorial Stadium uh, for the football game on Saturday. Uh, and those things, you know, to experience as a student athlete at the University of Nebraska, if you have the facilities to really put yourself in a position uh, from a performance standpoint to hopefully one day achieve your goals and also to have the great support of the best fan base in the country uh, for however many years you're on campus, uh, it's a great advantage. It's a great advantage for us, and we'll be able to showcase that this weekend. Biggest challenge for you in the next 30 days, maybe what, trying to figure out what exactly fits together, who fits with what? Is that the biggest thing for you in the next 30? My biggest challenge this year is going to be is figuring out our rotation. We, we feel really good about our group. Uh, we've got a lot of guys that we're going to be able to put on the floor. We've got a lot of depth. Uh, ultimately, how does everything fit together? Who starts? Uh, more importantly, who finishes? You know, who, who are you going to be able to have the trust in uh, to help you finish off the games that we were not able to a year ago? And, uh, you know, the biggest thing as far as uh, a player is role acceptance. You have to be able to go out there and accept whatever role is given to you if you truly have uh, the team, you know, team first mentality. So it is. These next 42 days are going to be very important uh, for how we establish that, uh, you know, what we're going to do as far as who we're going to put on the floor and, uh, you know, give us the best chance to win. All right, last thing for you. There's been a lot of changes around here, including a new boss for you. How's, how's, how's it been with Trev? Yeah, Trev's been, he's been phenomenal. I've, I've been really impressed with Trev's leadership uh, in, in his short time as athletics director at Nebraska. Uh, I've really enjoyed our meetings, just the support uh, that he has shown for our program. I, I, he understands 
you know, what we took over and where we are now with, um, uh, you know, with what we've accomplished as far as recruiting, putting a really good class together, what the future uh, looks like. Uh, but I'm excited. Trev's a guy that grew up a couple hours away from me in central Iowa, actually went to the same high school as our newest coach, Nate Lenzer. And uh, we shared a little time in Indiana together when he was with the Colts and I was playing for the Pacers. But I'm, I'm excited for Trev and his leadership, and I think he's going to do a phenomenal job as athletic director in Nebraska. All right, good to see you. Um, good luck in the next couple of weeks. Keep him healthy, but I know it's going to be competitive. And depth and Husker basketball have not been two words we've heard a lot of, but you now have, and this is exciting. Yeah, great to see you, Greg. I appreciate it. There's my conversation with Fred Hoiberg from earlier in the day. He's excited, and he is. He said his hardest job in the next 30 days is going to be figuring out what kind of rotation he's going to have. And he and I were talking earlier. I go, huh, John Cook's having the same issue. He goes, I, he goes, I need to talk to John <laughs> about what, what to do because he goes, I think I'm going to have the same issue. I think a, a lot of the teams probably are that have, you know, with the COVID year and so many people coming back, but then you still have a freshman class coming in. And, yeah, it's going to be – tough to figure out who's out there and it's got to have some guys separate themselves but it's a good problem to have and also when you start talking about preparing for games that you can actually put you know full scout team out there and it'll it'll actually be a challenge and so it's a good problem to have but yeah there's he's got a lot of talent in there that he's got to figure out how who plays the best together absolutely let's not kid ourselves there's going to be injuries i mean it's oh, just, there yeah. are there's gonna be somebody's gonna roll an ankle somebody's gonna you might have a knee injury. You might have some back problems. You're going to have issues as you move through. You the never year. know with COVID tracing still happening. So yeah, you know to have uh, you know other uh, other players that you can call on. And I also think you know matchups. You know we've seen seen yeah. it with the running backs, right? That they've had different options that they could go to. You might have a different lineup that that works better against a certain team than um, you know another team. So to have different, be able to throw different looks at people too, all, also is a, a big positive. Practice begins tomorrow. That big event at PBA is Friday night. 402-413-2400. Let's uh, sneak in a caller before we go to our first break. Let's go to North Platte. And Jim, good evening, Jim. You're on Sports Nightly. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. I have always been a big Nebraska fan. What's so frustrating to me is, you know what, I can see the guys or gals in any sport making mistakes at first or a second game. Here's my point. After the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh game, well, you should learn from your mistakes. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, and I, and, and I think the coaching staff, Jim, would would uh, echo your comments, and that's what was so frustrating about the false start penalty of the other night. It happened at Oklahoma, road game, loud crowd around you. They should have adapted better than they did well, what we saw them do Saturday night. Yeah, you thought that they would because, I mean, I said it when I heard after that first drive at Oklahoma in the huddle, the crowd noise settling down, you know, understanding that was the first time they're in a hostile environment. You thought that they would have been able to learn from that and carry that over. But also, as you mentioned, it wasn't that loud in there. Not it, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, so, no. um, you know, some of those issues you would hope would have gotten worked out. And again, I think you heard Scott Frost saying it in the post game that, you know, it's something that they work on um, every single day in practice. There, you've got the D line that's moving, and that's another thing. You're going up against such a good defensive line. You would think that, you know, it'd be maybe a um, relief to a lot of teams don't have the same kind of defensive line that Nebraska has that they have to play in practice every day. You'd think that they'd, you know, be a little bit more prepared. So yeah, again, that's why we heard them say that there might be some shuffle in in that starting rotation this week. Jim, appreciate the call, and I hear you. Hey, the Sports Alley Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400, the number to dot us up with a comment or question. More calls, more texts. We'll check with the chat room, and we'll hear from head coach Scott Frost, some clips that he had during the press conference today. All that coming up next. 
If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. For the fourth year in a row, the University of Nebraska system ranked as one of the top 100 institutions worldwide in earning U.S. patents. The NU system was granted 38 patents, and of those, 27 were awarded to UNL researchers. The result? New startup companies, jobs, and university-licensed products that grow Nebraska's economy. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Chevy, find new roads. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and a new flagship capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare. 
advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Phone lines are still open for you, 402 413 2400 to call or text. The head coach had a press conference earlier today to recap the Michigan State game and to start to look ahead to the Northwestern contest. And right off the bat, he hinted at a shakeup along the offensive line. We're going to look at it. Um, you know, there's some guys that I know have the ability to play better than, than what we've been playing um, at a few positions. So competition is always open, and, and we're going to give some other people a real shot. He expounded more about having an open competition as they get ready for Northwestern. Overall, I think we need to play better there. Um, if we'd gotten good play there, um, we'd be in a completely different spot. I think this year, um, special teams as well. Um, you know, it's kind of been a little bit here and a little bit there, but we got to find a left guard and we got to play a little better at, at right tackle. And, um, those are probably a couple of the spots we'll look at, but it's it's open competition everywhere. All right, so left guard has been Ethan Piper. It's been Trent Hickson. The right tackle has been Bryce Benhart. Bryce had a really difficult night Saturday night, so right there, those guys in those positions are on notice. Yeah, and I think, too, like, you know, talking with Jeremiah today, we picked his brain a lot. He knows the offensive line position better than anybody. Just moving people around, shuffling is not as easy as you may think that it is. And I know they're, you know, beat up a little bit. So, um, but again, it's also giving those guys the opportunity throughout the week in practice also helps you prepare. So it's not you're just not throwing them in come game, game time. time when someone isn't performing well. So at least if you give them the opportunity to, you know, prepare in that spot throughout the week, they'll be more prepared for, for game day. All right, later on in the press conference, the subject went back to the offensive line, and it was about what, what's keeping them from playing up to their potential. Here's a pretty good answer. I want to see more of an attitude and more of a nasty. Um, right now, we, we talk all the time about playing with a desire to excel and no fear of failure, and um, you can talk that all you want, but I want to see them come off the ball and, and rip it and strike people and run. And... Um, create some seams for the running backs to go through. I'd rather, I'd, right now, I'd rather have a miss doing that uh, than get on guys and not move anybody. Um, I don't want to see running backs take the ball and have a wall of people in front of them. Uh, we need some crease runs. That's going to open a lot of things up. And we've got to protect better. I, I think some of that was technique um, on Saturday. We're going to help them out some other ways. But um, you know, generating a little more consistent run uh, by being more aggressive and, and playing with good technique and, um, and protection. And, you know, we got maybe the most athletic quarterback in the country, and he still got sacked seven times. So uh, there's a lot to fix there. And um, Coach G's working hard, and, and so am I. A little more nasty is what he wants to see. I, I think that's exactly – I thought we saw some of that in Norman from Cam Jurgens. He was kind of – yeah, nasty that day. Absolutely, you'd, and again, you'd rather get tell them to 
uh, giddy up then and whoa. go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whoa. But what's crazy, so he was sacked seven times, but yet uh, they still almost had, uh, well, they had 194, almost 200 rushing yards, Nebraska did. Right. But, and still have not really played well up front, you know, so... I think it's again goes to um, show Adrian how well he's playing. Some of the even some of those sacks that he could elude, and he did go down seven times, but yet still were able to get to rack up 200, almost 200 yards rushing. So, um, you know, when I talked to Ramir Johnson after the game, he credited the offensive line. I think maybe there were times there were a couple of spots that allowed maybe some holes to open up, but that's the thing you got to have the holes open to hit for those running backs, but. Um, it's got to be more consistent throughout an entire game. That's for sure. You know, it's, what's interesting, and to the winners go the spoils, I, I get that. But I guarantee you, Mel Tucker, Michigan State's head coach, probably isn't answering a lot of questions about his offensive line today. And they did nothing right. in the game the other night. I mean, absolutely. They got I, dominated. Yeah. I mean, literally could not, they could not get anything going. They couldn't. You know, um, Walker they, didn't have any. They couldn't any run yards. the ball, but then also the the three sacks, what ten tackles for loss? They were able to get to yeah. the quarterback often. They were able to bring down, um, you know, Walker in the backfield a lot. Um, yeah, they were all over the place. But again, I, I just I think it, it's a lot of some young guys that are still having to work out some things on the front. But I do think there's some talent there, and hopefully, you know, getting giving some other guys some opportunity, breeding that competition. We'll see some positives coming out of that this week. The Huskers have not gotten off to good starts offensively. Really, all season long, they really have not had good opening drives of games. The coach was asked about the slow starts on offense earlier today. Uh, just talking about this year, you know, I remember all the games. Talking about this year, um, you can't start a, a drive off the quick pass and get sacked and things like that. You know, we... We uh, drive down the field and get a couple false starts. Those things kill drives. And when you're in one score game, one more score on any of those drives matters. And, um, uh, you know, I, I still, it, this is a different league than UCF. Comparing this to that is apples and oranges. Um, you know, I've coached in a couple of leagues where there's 60 to 50 games, and um, that's not the Big Ten. The, the Big Ten, you're going to win 23 to 20 and 31 to 24. and. 17 to 6 and um, possessions matter and you can't waste them. I want to get your thoughts on this because you just came from Oklahoma the Big 12 and it's not quite as severe as it was a few years ago but the Big 12 it was you had 51 48 shootouts a lot the Big 10 there is a lot better defense played in this league week in and week out. Yeah I I guess I you know, wasn't as concerned about, oh, they're not scoring early. They're not scoring on their first drive. Because to me, you look at what they've done coming out of halftime and how they've both the last two weeks just literally just marched down the field. Now, couldn't convert touchdowns, which right. they've got to fix. But, you know, the way that they were able to get right back down the field, you know, a lot of times it's figuring out what the defense is doing. What is Michigan State doing to figure out where they have those wrinkles, those holes that this offense can exploit. But, yeah, absolutely, it's it's different. It's just a different mindset it's a different league you i came from a league in the big 12 where you expected hey you just got to go out score your opponent and you would exploit the other team's defenses you throw it all over the place you just got to hope that you can outscore people maybe get one or two stops that's not now it's like it's in the big 10 it's like hey we just got to score you know a few times especially with this black shirt defense you don't necessarily have to put up 54 points or 48 points you just you know sc score some and let them do their thing and so yeah i think they're just a couple of points away as as you heard scott frost and just of you know this this tide turning completely 21 would have won it the other night yeah 21 would have won that the other and night. what 24 the week before yep or, yeah well, 23 16 yeah so yeah 24, 24 points yeah so and if you don't give a block pat 21 would have had you tied yeah in that so game. all right the punting woes um he talked about that he was asked about them having two safeties back to retrieve that, did it change the strategy? Here was his comment. He shouldn't even been a factor in the play. Um, no, and we got to pay attention to where the ball goes, but uh, people do that when you have potential for rugby punt, and the punt could go anywhere, and uh, to try to get it fielded and, and not let it roll. Uh, but seven yard punts don't roll very far, and punts that miss their mark by uh, 35 yards um, you know we didn't have anybody over there so uh, but you know there's 
there's 30 plays that would have won that game for us. And uh, we can point at a few of those, and that was obviously not good. But um, there's other areas we can get better, too. See, now, Jessica, I think some people probably go, well, he didn't need to say that about the seven-yard punt. It, it happened. He's, like, he's not making it up. That's what happened. It, I mean, field advantage and disadvantage and all of that. And we also saw, again, as you mentioned earlier, Michigan State, Illinois, their punters, how big of a difference that can make when you can boom one when you have, are backed up against, you know, your own end zone or whatever, and then you can absolutely flip the field with it. So, and when you can't, it's a huge disadvantage. The hidden yards of football, which is, which is really, really big. All right, here's, here comes Northwestern week. This, this series has been unbelievable with how close these games have been between Nebraska and Northwestern. And on paper, some years you're like, it shouldn't be, but it is. Uh, the coach was asked, are you anticipating another close game this week? Uh, every game in this league is close, it seems like. Um, everybody's so even in this league, and, and that's why little things matter so much. Uh, but this is a exceptionally well-coached, disciplined, intelligent team that doesn't beat itself. And, um, you know, you're going to be in close games with a team like that. And we'll wrap it up with his impressions of what Northwestern's looked like through their first part of their season. They looked the same. Um, you know, they had some pretty good players. They, they still do. Um, they lost some special guys. Um, I, I think it's a team that probably started the year inexperienced, and you can see their improvement already through the course of this year uh, from game one to what the game they just played. So uh, he'll get these guys right. Um, and uh, they're, they're always going to have a, a really good team. Cats coming off their best performance of the year. They, they put it to Ohio on, on, over the weekend. So, you know, they'll come prepared, they'll come ready, and they'll fight Nebraska tooth and nail. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Need to sneak a break in. Time for you if you want to join the program at 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. We're back with more coming up. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Shop Woodhouse Chevy Buick in Missouri Valley, Iowa, and experience the Woodhouse difference, where our sales staff is here, ready to help you find your perfect new car, truck, or SUV. And with over 100 new vehicles on our lot with more arriving daily, we're sure to have something for you. From the Buick Encore to our heavy-duty trucks, we have the best selection available. Find new roads and shop all of our inventory and offers at WoodhouseChevy.com or visit us at our dealership for a test drive today. Making car buying easier. This is Woodhouse. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is highbid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at highbid.com. Highbid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to highbid.com. That's H-I-B-I-D.com and find what you're looking for today. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another Another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent, and they'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only Shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. 
And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. All without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location. Or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The Rural Fellows Program doubled their average number of participating students this year, putting UNL student interns to work in 17 Nebraska communities for the summer. Interns use their skills to get real-world experience on a variety of projects, from mapping out trail systems to creating promotional videos to researching and documenting local history. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds, one in $292 million. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. 27 locations across Nebraska and into Canada's Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Uh, Mark on our text line says, the right tackle got beat most of the night. Why not take him out? What, where's the accountability there? I think there might have been uh, some thoughts to do that. Brant Banks is probably your backup right tackle, but then he got hurt. Hurt his mm -hmm. hand, as Jeremiah reported during the broadcast. So I don't know if they had anybody else kind of ready to roll. I, I think he had a cast on by the end of it. You so. can't play offensive line with a yeah. cast on. So, and, and that's what I was saying earlier about, you know, throwing people in that might not have prepared throughout the week at practice. You know, maybe this week they'll be more likely to change some things because if they've given some people some opportunities throughout the entire week to prepare. Another text, Nebraska's rushing numbers are always deceiving because of Adrian's numbers. Why? Nebraska running the quarterbacks part of the offense. Yeah, I so mean. So why would that be? And Adrian only had f uh, 59 net yards. Ramir had an average four yards a tote, 76 yards. I don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, if you have. That's part of it. Is, yeah, if we have a running quarterback. Right. That's what we do with our offense. Yeah. So, I mean, did they, have they run the ball? Now, I think they ran it 
they've ran it a little bit better, but they have not ran the ball well running from the running backs, which is that's again what right. Scott Frost said earlier today is when you get the ball and you got a wall of defenders in front of you, you know, he wants to see some separation there. So um I, I don't I think that's part of it though is that Adrian that's what you get with him is he's True. that's what that's the weapon that he can be. But with seven sacks you also get the yeah. negative yardage right. for his total. One eighty eight on the ground against Michigan State's pretty good. On the ground, yeah. In the game because so. we all thought going into it they would be able to throw it correct all over the place. The fact they were able to get some yards on the ground was a big positive. Yeah, almost two hundred on the ground, two forty eight through the air. So, but yeah, you I mean when you have a running quarterback, the running the running totals are certainly going to be they're going to reflect that. Uh, when you, there's a lot of teams that would kill to have a quarterback that with Adrian's run. legs. Absolutely. All right, Jessica, this is, no, no, I, I think this is odd. Irvin Skyder wants to know if you have had a sip of the Husker Kool-Aid and is it to your liking? Well, if that is, am, or is he asking me, am I buying into the Kool-Aid here? Am I not being, you know, truthful? I actually think this is, really is a good football team. I think you can see it. I think the defense is yep. absolutely legit. Um, I think there's you know, again, I wasn't embedded with the program a year ago, but I think there's obvious improvements. And again, when you have a defense playing the way that they're playing, you you can go into a game with a ton of confidence, knowing that the opposing team is probably not going to get on the board very right. much. But if he's ex asking me if I actually, if I'm liking the Kool-Aid, I love it here. I love yeah. Nebraska. I love covering this team. I love covering these programs. Got to do softball yesterday. That was fun. So, yes. So I don't know how what he's asking yeah, there, yeah, but if you, I do. I love it here in Nebraska, but I actually am not just blowing smoke over here when I do say that I I see a lot of positives you know, in this football team. And to back us up on that, it's not just us. Yeah, I mean we played you Joel Klatt's conversation after the Oklahoma game last week. Kirk Herbstreit on game day this week, he sees a difference in Nebraska, and he picked Oscars to win the other night. We should have won the other night. So people are noticing. These aren't just you and me. These are people that are national football that cover the whole sport, and they're seeing it too. So it's not just you and me. Yeah, and again, because I you know, came from Oklahoma, I went on a lot of shows last week that there were a lot of people saying the same thing as well, that you know, some former players, I, I've talked about Gabe Eichert, who played with Jeremiah at the Bills. You know, He was saying, he was talking about it. You're, you're looking at a, a Nebraska football team that people aren't giving them enough credit, and they are a couple of mistakes away from being an undefeated football team. So I think yeah. a lot of people have noticed that there is a difference in this football team this year. So. All right, need to take a quick break. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text. We're back to wrap up tonight's little chit-chat show next. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds won in $292 million. Finally, it's time to tailgate, to find your spot in a sea of red, to get together with family and fans, and to share what makes Husker football season the best. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with their big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours at Valentino's.com. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, 
and Dave's Cheesy Mac and Cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Welcome to Ag Answers. Today we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, and of course, it's the law. 402 413 2400, the number to call with a comment or a text. Rudy M. Forrest says, No, Matt, tonight that I missed something. Yeah, Matt forgot to tell me that he's out, uh, <laughs> he's out visiting donors. So he was out. He's not in Lincoln today. So, so you didn't miss it, Rudy. We right. didn't have him. We, we wish we would have, but we didn't have him. Good substitute with Coach Hoiberg, though. How about that? That was great to have that. Thing yeah. Going on there. Uh, basketball practice starts tomorrow. Amy Williams, Fred Hoiberg's teams get on the court. I still believe, I'm in the minority here, that they're starting too early. I mean, tomorrow's what, the 28th of September? Yeah, well, and then they have all the time that they can be on the court in the summer now, too. I right. mean, it's basically basketball's a year-round sport nowadays, like football is. And, I mean, it's a long time to long play. Time. It gets really hard at the end. And, and the coaches um, always in March go, oh, we've been to such a long year. Well, you guys do it. They start to start too early. Yeah. It used to be October 15th. You used to have these midnight madness yeah. things on October 15th. They and it up then you start like mid November, right? Right, like, with yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know a lot of people are ready for it. I'm excited. I can't wait to watch our teams play. It'll be fun. All right, time to get into this week weekend winners. What sticks out to you? USA. How about USA. That? Isn't that incredible? USA. Dominating in the Ryder Cup. One of my favorite sporting events. My guy, DJ Dustin Johnson, 5 and 0. Oh, how incredible was he? And Brooks and Bryson hugged it out. Uh, what? Like, hugged it out. You know, Ryder Cup, Ryder Cup, bringing people together. We'll right. see if the feud is laid to bed as we move on into the Probably PGA not. season. Bryson was a rock star. He drove the par, the drivable par four first. Crowd, the crowd was going nuts on Sunday when he drove the green. He was pretty good. It's it's just so fun to see them, you know, personalities and let loose a little bit. They're, you know, pumping up the crowd. I mean, you saw what Justin Thomas, I think, was the one he was – Yep. Just going nuts in front of the, the stadium crowd. Um, but, yeah, just a, a dominating performance from start to finish. And, um, you know, on the, on the home field in Wisconsin, so home soil, you protect your home soil. And a crowd got to be back this year, and they were in full force. Great. It was just all around amazing. And then to cap it off, you know, so the, my, my winner is Team USA for the Ryder Cup. But then underneath that, my uh, A and B B winners is Dustin Johnson. I, he's my favorite golfer, and then the way he performed, loved Five it. Five and zero. Yep. Five and zero. Only uh, what I think of was like Arnold Palmer. So only like four people in the history that have played every single event and have gone unbeaten. So. Okay, my winner is Lindsey Krause. Tim added the ticker. Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Huskers go two and zero last week. She played terrific in the win at Northwestern and the home victory over the Iowa Hawkeyes. So Lindsey Krause is my weekend winner with her performance on the volleyball floor. We'll have our volleyball show back in its normal spot, s- slot tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. John Cook, John Bader. We'll talk about the upcoming week. The Michigan schools are coming to town. Michigan Friday, Michigan State on Sunday at the Devaney. Should be a fun conversation again coming off two wins. It's a dip, you know, yeah. after they had... You know, had the three-game losing streak, snapped, uh, streak, snapped that 2-0 to start conference play. It'll be fun to hear what he has to say. Yep, and we did, we've only had one match since his last show, but I'm sure those two will be able to fill uh, the full hour tomorrow night. That'll do it for tonight. Great show. Thanks, for everybody, for being a part of this one with calls, texts. If you're in the chat room, appreciate you showing off your Husker spirit in there. Thanks to Jessica, to Mike, to Andrew, and to Tim, and all of you for listening. We're back here again tomorrow night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. 
Thankfully, I have Marco's managed print services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's lightning fast tech support gets me back in the game fast. <sighs> I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's managed print services at marconet.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game.